I am so glad you know the so very ancient Nigun that we have passed down in our tradition for so, so many years. It comes from a land far, far away, and I am so glad it has made its way all the way here to BTBJ. Thank you for singing with us. Hopefully, we'll have more opportunity to sing it again throughout our service tonight. We gather first for our Marif service. So to give you a little bit of a lay of the land of what you're in for tonight, we have lots of different types of people who have joined us and creatures who have joined us for this service. So we are very excited that all of you have come tonight. We are going to start with a little bit of an evening service. Then we will move into Havdalah so that we can mark the transition from Shabbat into Purim more officially into the rest of the week. And then we'll move into a very silly, very fun Purim spiel. And finally, we will have a bit of a telling of our Purim story. Are you ready? You do not sound ready. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. So I am going to invite you to turn to page one of your little booklet and please rise if you are comfortable, comfortable and able to do so. You may be seated. Baruch you may be seated. Baruch Hashanah, Baruch Hashanah, you may be seated. Baruch Hashanah, you may be seated. Avat <laughs> Of mitzvah zecha v'alam ba'ed ki em chayenu v'yorech yameinu v'yorech yameinu uvahem nege yomam ba'layla yomam ba'layla Amen. We turn to the top of page 11 as we prepare ourselves to say the Shema as we connect with all of the Barbies and the Marios and the Cub Scouts and the Pirates and the Fire Chiefs and the Princesses all over the world as we bring them all into our hearts as we know that we are all saying these words together. Top of page 2. I think it's Roman numeral two. It is page two. I said 11. It looks like an 11. It's page two. <laughs> I want to figure that out by the time we got to page three. <laughs> Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Be'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha Mekhova <laughs> We continue silently on page three. Yeah, yeah. Page four, we come together at the middle of the page. 
As we turn to page five and sing the words of Hashkivenu, or a piece of the words from Hashkivenu, a moment of seriousness in our evening of silliness and joy, I want to ch share a prayer for the state of Israel by Ron Agin as we send our thoughts and our prayers at, with all of those who are still suffering through this war uh, in, in Israel and in Gaza. And we pray for their safety. We pray for their speedy return. And I share these words tonight. Rock and redeemer of the people of Israel, guardian of the covenant, bless and protect the state of Israel and all of her inhabitants. Guard this good land established with liberty, justice, and peace as conceived by the prophets of Israel. Open the hearts and minds of all the leaders of the nation, her sons and her daughters, to guide them in the paths of peace and justice with true strength and wisdom. Strengthen the hands of those who defend and protect our holy land and crown their efforts with success, that they might establish your reign of righteousness, free from all oppression and fear. May the work of their hands be established and the words of your prophets be fulfilled, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, nor shall they learn war anymore. And we say together, Amen. Amen. We sing uh, the words, Rufos Aleinu Sukat Shlomecha, as we send these words out to everywhere that they are needed. Rufros Aleinu Sukat We continue on the middle of page six as I continue to be tested in my Roman numerals. Amen. <laughs> We turn now uh, to page seven for our Amida, and we will move through our Amida silently, and so I invite you to rise if you're comfortable and able to do so. We'll begin on page 7, and it goes through until page 11, and then we'll come back together with a prayer for peace.
We conclude together with a prayer for peace. Oh, say shalom, Imram. Oh, yeah, say shalom, Aleinu, Viyako Yisrael, Vimru, Vimru, Amen. Yeah, say shalom. Don't go far. Yeah, say shalom. Shalom, Aleinu, Viyako Yisrael, Yeah, say shalom. Yeah, say shalom. Shalom Amen. So because it is Saturday night, we get to make Havdalah together as we transition from Shabbat into Purim more officially. And so if you want to come on up, you're welcome to do so. And there is a piece that, uh, well, the blessings are, are in your little book here, but there's a piece that we'll sing before we even get to the beginning. Um, Isabel might be playing guitar, except she just went in the other room. Um, so I want to ask you all, as we go from Shabbat into Purim, there is a lot going on in the world. And at Purim, we are commanded to be joyful. Actually, for the entire month of Adar, we are supposed to be filled with joy. That when Adar comes, joy, joy comes with it. And perhaps it's fitting that this year happens to be a leap year. So not only did we have one month of Adar, we actually had two. And as I'm, as I'm thinking about that, perhaps it, it is fitting that we have two months of Adar because that's actually how much joy we need to kind of find and grab onto. That it might be hard to find that in ourselves when we read the newspapers or we watch the news or we follow social media. And we can, I'm sure, think of any long list of things um, and reasons why maybe we shouldn't be joyful or we shouldn't let ourselves. And yet we're told that on Purim that we actually have to bring that joy. All through all of Adar, we have to bring that joy. And actually, it's only the middle of Adar. So we still have, after Purim, a whole rest of the month that we can bring that joy. So I hope that, I am sure that there have been moments over the last month and a half where you have not been feeling it, and I'm with you, that there have been moments where I have not been feeling it either. But looking around this room, it is hard to not feel it right now. I'm looking at certain people in particular, and it is hard to not feel it. So especially as we go through the rest of Adar, and maybe even as we go on into the rest of the year, should you have moments that understandably bring you down, it's OK. But then maybe allow yourself to kind of capture these moments, to capture these images, allow them to imprint somewhere in your mind and in your heart, so that when you need it, you can have a little bit of a reserve so that you can tap that and come back to this. And maybe that will help kind of lift your spirits and give you the energy that you need to be able to get out there and continue to make the world a better place and to bring more joy where it's needed. So we're on page 12. I can do this, Roman numerals. Um, Alana, do you want to come hold a candle? Isabel. Just come sing. Forget the guitar. What? Yes. Lori, can you come too? over the glass. Okay, so there is a line. Um, it's good. So there's a line that there's a, we talked about this this morning for those of you who are here with us. So do you want to hold this, Lori? Um, that there's a line that's a part of a paragraph that, it, that normally we only do when we make Havdal at home. It's not something that we would normally sing um, when we're together in community. Um, but there's a line that we studied this morning that I do want to raise up because it's a line that comes from Megillat Esther. So we'll read it tomorrow when we, when we chant the full Megillah in the morning. Um, but it seems particularly appropriate um, because it is basically, as we talked about this morning, we said, let it be a prayer that we should 
uh, that, that the Jews should have joy and glad, or light, joy, gladness, and there was another one. Um, there are four of them, four different words that kind of say all of that. Yes. Let it be that we bring all of these things and that by making Havdalah and by celebrating Purim, we create these things into the world just as it was for the folks in Shushan and for the Jews of, of Shushan and in the story, so may it be for us. I think it really makes the so, La Yehudim. Yes, this guitar really makes the outfit Yes, here. yeah. You'll have to start saying this like a thing or two. Hey. 
Barbie. To Daraba. You, you can move it around. James. Can, yeah, you can move it aside. Oh, thank you, James. We are going to turn ahead to page 44 as we move toward the conclusion of our service. And I invite you to rise as we join together for Alenu. I'm going to just turn it around. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I hate looking at it that way. <laughs> seated. We turn to page 46 for Kadishia Tome for Mourner's Kaddish. If there is anyone in the community who is currently in a period of mourning and reciting Kaddish, or if you are observing the yard site, the anniversary of the passing of a loved one, I invite you to rise, along with all those for whom it's your custom to rise in support of the mourners, or for those who have no one to say Kaddish for them, as we recite Mourner's Kaddish together. Yitzgadal, Vitzkadash, Shemei Raba, Vialma Divra Hirute, Viam Lif Malhute, Bahaye Hon Uviome Hon, Uvhaye de Hol Bait Yisrael, Baagala Uvizman Kari, Vimru Amen. Yehe Shme Raba, Mevarach, Leolam, Olame, Omaya, Yit Barach, Vit Tabach, Vit Paar, Vit Romam, Vit Nase. Viet Adar Viet Ale Viet Halal Shemei Dekudesha Brihu Leela Minkol Birhata Veshirata Tushbehata Venehemata Ta Amiran Bialma Vimru Amen Yehe Shlomo Raba Min Shemaya Behaim Alenu Vial Kol Yisrael Vimru Amen O Ses Shalom Bim Romab Hu Ya Ases Shalom Alenu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. May the memory of all our loved ones forever be a blessing to us and to all who knew them. We will end with our very old and ancient nigun as we transition into our Purim spiel. Ya da 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 da, ya da 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 da, ya da da da, ya da da da, ya da 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 da, ya da 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 da. Okay. So, you're all in for quite a treat. We have practiced one time. So we thank you in advance for being for being such a 
lovely, supportive, caring, kind audience. Forgiving. Forgiving. <laughs> as we uh, partake in this delightful Purim experience together. The script that we are using this evening is a, originally written by Rabbi Alex Lazarus Klein, um, who's a rabbi in Buffalo. We cut it down dramatically and edited it a bit as well. Um, and so this is what we bring you tonight. For the purposes of the Purim spiel, there will be no need to use the rock. Besides, we say, hey, we're going to start singing. How do you suggest we put this on me? Because. everybody. A long time ago, in a time that really was not that long ago, like practically yesterday, all Jewish leaders were men, and men were all Jewish leaders. They were the rabbis, the cantors, the federation heads, the JCC heads, the synagogue presidents, the heads of all Jewish organizations, and on and on. Girls and women were given only a few roles, wives, Mothers, grandmothers, in that order, canasta ladies, sisterhood members, and religious school teachers. They were allowed to sit quietly in services and even sing during their brother's bar mitzvah. But they certainly were not allowed to have a bat mitzvah of their own. That was true every day of the year, except for one, a day dedicated to the one Jewish woman who could never be confined to a box. She was star of the show, the belle of the ball, matzo ball of the chicken soup. And one day of the year, she would come out to serve as a role model for Jewish girls and women everywhere to show them exactly who they could be. Hello, Esther. Well, hello, Esther. Hi. So good to see you, Esther, Esther Streisand. Your voice is amazing. Thank you. Fight for the things you believe in, sister. An official message of Justice Ruth Bader Esther. Yes. What kind of Esthers are you? I'm Esther Golden, Prime Minister of Israel. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddle masses waiting to break free. Keep working on that one, Esther, Emma. I think you're onto something. So what's on the docket today, Mordecai? Let's see, vanquish Hamaken, save the Jews, and celebrate. I think I can handle that. You always do. Don't I? <laughs> Easy peasy. I'm so proud to serve as a role model to Jewish girls and women everywhere. Because of me, they can be anything they want to be. Definitely. Because of Queen Esther, Jewish women can be happy and powerful. All right, let's get this over with. Hello, Hema Ken and Ahash Ken. Did you hear the one about the Jewish princess? She got sick every time she ate cereal because it was so spoiled. Okay, I'll cut you my other joke. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> What's a Jewish princess's favorite wine? I want to go to Florida. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, that's a good one, hey, McCann. Oh, yeah, spoiler alert. I'm the Jewish princess, and this Jewish princess is here to tell you that fruity loops like you will never defeat princesses like me. Off to the gallows, away. Foiled again. I love how you let him have it with all of your strength. I only wish us men 
could have that type of power. Isn't Queen Esther marvelous? Yada, yada, yada. Enough of this chit chat. I'm bored with all these Kens. You know what time it is now? Esther's, it's time to party. The biggest party Shushan has ever had. be a rabbi. I mean, I can't wait until the next song. But Queen Esther did want to be a rabbi. The next day when she woke up, a strange feeling took her over. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Oh, honey, what's wrong? You can talk to me. Wait, I missed my place. No. Oh, sorry. I don't know. I've always liked things the way they were being the hero and all, but now I suddenly want something else. I mean, look at this. What is that, a scroll? I think it's a book. Oh, this is serious. I think she needs to see Weird Esther. Do you mean Vashti? That's what we said, Weird Esther. How do I get there? Go there. Queen Esther, I never expected to see you in a place like this. Where exactly is this place? The women who are not in the Torah kind of place. Not in the Torah, but women are the stars of our tradition. Where would Judaism be without them? Welcome to my world, sister. Let me tell you about all the misses. The misses missing from Torah, that is. First, there's Lilith, the first woman. But I thought that was Eve. Mm-hmm. And then there's Haggy, you know, the mother of Ishmael. Oh, and there's Leia with the sad eyes. And finally, there's Tsipora. We talked about her, wife of Moses. But hey, why are you here? What is it, sister? It's me. I just don't feel right. I have this terrible desire to be a rabbi. Cool, cool. I like that. But I think you'd make a, a, a great rabbi. But I'm Queen Esther. I don't need to be a rabbi. I see. Yeah, well, you probably wouldn't. Seeing that queen kind of trumps rabbi and all. I think I know what's going on. Come on over here. Okay. As you can see, women are in charge of everything, and you are queen. That's over here in Shushan. But this over here, that's the real world. I'm Queen Esther, ruler of 127 provinces from India. Oh, that, I do that all the time. <laughs> Sorry, this is my first time with this kind of mic, or any mic. Um, from India? Place, from India to, where is it? To Nubia, <laughs> and controller of all the Kens. That is who you are here. But here, Ahash Ken is in charge, and not you. <laughs> A Ken in charge? He wouldn't even know his, if his crown was, he wouldn't even know where his crown was, even if it was directly on his head. Yep, a Ken is in charge. And it's not because he's any different than he is here, it's just because he's a man. So what's my role in all of this? Well, you are there to inspire Jewish girls and women. You let them know that they have a place in Jewish tradition and that they could have a place too. I think that is what's happening here. Someone in the real world over here is calling to you. They want to be a rabbi, and so you want to be a rabbi. Okay, okay, I get it. But what can I do to stop it from happening? You're going to have to go to the real world. Find this girl and help her to become a rabbi. Go to the real world. How on Shushan would I ever do that? Don't even think about it, just go. 
Yerushalayim shall zahav, shall nekoshet bishel. Haman, Haman Ken, what are you doing here? I hear you're going to the real world. I want to go there too. Well, I don't want you to come. You have to go back. You'll only get in the way. Please, please, I'll be good, I promise. All right, all right, but no funny business. You stick with me the whole time. Yerushalayim shall zahav. Hey girls, what's up? Did I miss a page? Okay, I think we made it. It's been a long road. We are, we are on some big thoroughfare with lots of traffic. The sign says, Paper Mill Road. Remember, no trouble. Okay, okay. Right, him and Ken. Looks like, looks like we should go that way. BTBJ. It looks like a synagogue. They will have some answers for us. Rabbi, I'm so glad I ran into you. No. No, I'm not the rabbi. His office is over there. <laughs> now I'm really confused. Hey, Ken, why don't you go wait in the library? I'll be right back. Yes, come in. Who are you? I'm Queen Esther. And what can I do for you, Queen Esther? Rabbi, can I ask you, where are all the women rabbis? Women? Rabbis? That's a good question. These are all of the rabbis of our, in the history of our Jewish community. But these are all male. Where are the women rabbis? Women? Maybe you can point me towards the girls who want to become rabbis. Uh, for that, you'll need to go to the religious school that's down the hall to the right. You might find a few girls that fit the description. Sir, I think we have a problem. Guess who just left my office? Esther, as in Queen Esther. You'd better get down here right away. Hey girls, what's up? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who am I? I'm not. I'm only. I'm, bleh, I'm only your favorite woman of all time. I'm Queen Esther. Oh, you don't want to come in here. We'll eat you alive. Queen Esther, do you know what your story even is? Your story represents everything that's wrong in our culture. What's wrong with my story? Let me count the ways. Bashti being forced to come to the king to dance, a beauty contest that is basically an invitation to slavery, and that you can't even go in front of the king unless he raises his scepter. If anyone's a hero, it's Mordecai, and I'm only getting started. Mordecai, I've been upstaged by a Ken? <laughs> The real world is absolutely awful. I have to get out of here. Not so fast. Oh. Not so fast, Esther. We just got a call from the rabbi. We know exactly what you're up to. And who might you be? Just the head of Hadassah, the largest Jewish women's organization in the world. <laughs> but why are you all men? Hey, girl. I'll have you know that we are all allies here. We all have mothers, sisters, and wives. We are your friends. And as an act of friendship, we need you to get into this box here. Come with me quick, Esther. I'll get you out of here. 
we're going to Shushan. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in Shushan, Hamaken returned and shared with everyone what was actually in the Megillah. And I mean the whole Megillah. Let me get this straight. You mean the king, a.k.a. me, is the one with all the power and not the queen? Unbelievable, yes. And Esther is my niece and not my boss? Yes, and get this. Hamakan, or as they refer to Haman, is the... Res yeah. Is the respected and feared villain. Just like the one in the Disney movies. I'm the Jafar of Purim. <laughs> we have to go and tell the others. Yes, we have to tell them. They're not going to believe this. It's time for the Kens to retake our proper place in Shushan. We've been number two here for too long. You are not going to believe how great things are here. We are so excited. Finally, a place where women are in charge. Not anymore. We've brainwashed all the Esthers, and now Shushan is officially anti-Esther. Mom, I thought you said it'd be different here. I thought it would be. I think we're just as confused as Esther is. This has to stop. I am the queen here. Silence. I didn't raise my scepter, did I? Esther, I think we need to get out of here. But where can we go? The real world is not much better. I know we can go. Quick, ladies, follow me. We're going to the, we're going to the one woman who will know exactly what to do. Oh, goody. You brought the girl back with you. We can finally get to the bottom of this mystery. All right, so you wanted to become a rabbi. How can we help? A rabbi? No, I would never. I was thinking more like the President of the United States. So why was Queen Esther then asking to be a rabbi? What's the matter? Are you all right? It's me. What do you mean? I'm the one who wanted to be a rabbi. You? Yeah, honey. Believe it or not, when I was younger, I had career aspirations. <laughs> I loved singing the prayers in synagogue, taking classes, everything about being Jewish. But when I was growing up, there were almost no women rabbis, or none that I knew of. Oh, I, I wanted to go to rabbinical school, but I, I never was brave enough to send in my application. Then I had you, and I didn't think I would have the time or the energy to do it anyway. Then watching you at religious school and preparing for your bat mitzvah, something awoke in me. Me? I didn't even know you were paying attention. Of course I was. You're my inspiration. <laughs> I love you, Mom. But Esther, it was you that gave me the final nudge to try it. When Mordecai asked you to confront the king to save our people, you were afraid, but you still did it anyway. I am always inspired by your story, but this year, I saw your life in mine. Now I'm crying, too. Now we just have to use that bravery and go face the Kens. The Kens? They brainwashed the other Esthers and they have taken over Shushan. It just makes me so mad. Just when I think I finally have something figured out, everything falls apart. I think the world is really against us Jewish moms. We're supposed to do all the rituals, cook all the holiday meals, bring our kids to religious school, and still have time to be the cool mom. We're supposed to prepare the Passover Seder and write the Haggadah as well to fiercely protect our kids and yet somehow show up and give them independence to get lost. Never miss a Friday night service, yet somehow show up at all our kids' soccer games. They want us to work full-time, be a full-time mom, and still have time to work on our own spirituality, to not only be a lifetime member of Hadassah, but to make sure our daughters are as well to take care of our aging moms and our growing teenagers, I could go on and on. You're absolutely right. 
Now let's get to those Kens. We'll play on their egos and all of their petty jealous jealousies and turn them against each other. And while they're distracted, all of you will help free the other Esters from their grasps by whispering your wonderful thoughts into their ears and we'll take Shushan back. Wow, what a great plan. How did you come up with it? Actually, I saw it on the Barbie movie. <laughs> Ooh, ah. What a great film, right? But there is one other part of the plan that is straight out of our Megillah. Everything we do is going to start with a party. And so Esther went off and sent invitations to Ahashken, Mordekin, and Hamaken. Boys, I'm so glad you decided to show up. Yeah, we wouldn't have missed it, you know. We came to celebrate with you. And what about you, Akash Ken? You're looking kind of quiet over there. Does this party merit the raising of your scepter? It certainly does. But you brought us here for a reason. What was it, my queen? Well, I just wanted to let you know how much each and every one of you means to me. I love you each equally. Equally? That can't work. You must love me the best. If she loves anyone, it would be me. And what am I, chop liver? Quick, ladies, go and work your magic. <laughs> what's, what's happening here? I think this is where the tables get turned. On you. Uh, I think you mean on all of us. We've had all the power, and yet... It doesn't seem to matter what we do. We're always number two. <laughs> Come up, all you Mojo Dojo Casa Kens, please. <laughs> hey, check us out. Yeah, we're just Kens. We're just Kens, and so am I. Put your manly hand in mine. Six out, it was just Ken. We'll just Ken. I just Ken! Yeah! <laughs> We're Kens, and we are enough. I never really liked being in charge. It's hard running a Mojo Dojo Casa Shushan. Esther, Shushan is better off with women as equals. I'm passing the baton back to you, making you officially Queen Esther. It looks like we have solved the problem. Women can be in charge here, Shushan, in Shushan, and in the real world as well. Only it were so easy. Real world problems can't all be solved by fixing the book of Esther. As much as we have tried over the years, Jewish women still take a back seat to the men. There was a time I thought we could solve all of the problems just by standing up and letting our voices be heard, but I'm not so sure anymore. Maybe I'm not really made out to be a rabbi. I have a few people I would like to introduce you to. They've been hiding in the shadow the whole time, but are really are re are ready to show their faces. Hi, I'm Sally Presand. And I'm Sandy Eisenberg Sasso. I think you should explain a little bit more about who you are. Well, we are the first female rabbis in North America. I was ordained in 1972 from HUC. And I was ordained in 1974 from RRC. Back then, it was really tough for us. We used to receive a lot of hate mail from our rabbis. No one knew what to do with us. They called us so many names, didn't let us take the jobs that we would be good at, and made our lives miserable. So why did you stick with it? Well, we didn't feel like we had much of a choice. This was our calling. We knew that all the stuff that we had to go through would make it easier for other women and your daughter, people like you who always dreamed of becoming a rabbi. And it has. Right now, there are over 1,000 women rabbis in America alone. More throughout the world on top of that. Not just rabbis, the Jewish le women leading the way in synagogues, 
federations, JCCs? Well, I, for one, am feeling inspired. You should, because as much as we, we were trailblazers, what you did thousands of years ago was the true inspiration for all we do. It really was, and that's why Henrietta Zold named the first organization of Jewish women by your Hebrew name, Dasa. Look, look at what a difference you continue to make to all of us. What do you think of that? Are you ready to become a rabbi? I don't know. Mom, you really have to. Well, okay. More to Ken. And so everything ended up happy in the end. Everything was now equitable and perfect in Shushan, and also in the real world as well, right? Wrong. Wrong. Well, looks like we still have a little work to do. Doesn't mean we can't dream. None of this would have been possible if Lori did not step up as our director, because we had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> and if you thought that was good, then next year you should go see the musical at Abington High School. <laughs> so I want to give us an opportunity to really not just be able to take in our, the costumes of our Barbies and Kens that were up here just a moment ago, but to also be able to appreciate the rest of the costumes that we have in the room. So why don't we have, if anyone wants to come up and tell us who they are, and we can have a bit of a costume parade before we move into a very short Megillah reading. So here, let me, uh, let me do it this way. So raise your hand. Raise your hand if you want to tell us your costume. Yes, Sam. Uh, I was a sports player. A sports player? You too, Max? No, I'm a spy. Oh, we got the glasses. I see. I didn't. I didn't know because we were like camouflaged because we were a spy. Yeah, I didn't really know. All right, Lily, what are you? I'm like a pop star Barbie. Oh, pop star Barbie. Okay, good. So we have a lot of Barbies in the room, right? Raise your hand if you are some type of Barbie. All right, we're gonna come around and see you in a minute. What are you, Ava? Basic Barbie. Basic Barbie. Basic Barbie. Sure, I'm a ninja. Okay, ninja. Maybe Ninja Ken or just ninja? No. Just ninja. A pirate. Pirate, we have the world's cutest little pirate. Do you want to tell me what you are, Jude? No. Jude's a soccer player. Okay. Oh, sorry, I missed you, Asher. I'm a Will Pharaoh. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Scarlet. Esther. Est Queen Esther. Hang it. Oh. I'm a Cub Scout. <laughs> Old McDonald. <laughs> and I see you have a, a duck duck there and an oink oink there. Okay, great. I'm Ruth Handler. Oh, are we related? I like to think so. Any other costumes down here? Are you about to RBG? RBG. Oh, that's a 
Macbeth, yeah. Oh, all right, let's get some costumes. Harrison. Harry Potter. Harry Potter, Sierra. Um, I'm a queen. I was going to say, you look like a queen. Um, Sidra, what about you? Witch. Are you a witch? Is your mommy a witch, too? Yeah, I'm Calista yes. McGonagall, and we have Harry Potter here. Oh. I was just going to ask what he was. I was like Dumbledore, Hagrid. Mm, we got the whole, the whole, the whole party there. All right. Deborah. I'm tennis Barbie. I traded in my high heels for sneakers. Smart woman. I haven't done that yet. Skipper. I skipper. Rock and roll, Ken. Thanks for lending us the uh, guitar earlier. My name's Ken. I was going to come as Canner Benjamin, but I couldn't find my beard. <laughs> you're just, you're, you're, you're just a can. You're just the Queen Vera's chauffeur. Okay. Dancer Barbie. Dancer Barbie. I'm a fashion designer Barbie. Oh, I'm fashion designer Barbie. And of course, Weird Barbie in the middle. You did not catch Weird Barbie's makeup. You have to take that in when you see her later. I'm soccer Barbie, and she's lawyer Barbie. Oh, lawyer Barbie. That's like a big departure from your normal. Mojo Dojo, Casa Cal. Casa House, Ken. Nice job, Ken. Are you also lawyer Barbie? No. I'm President, Bar oh. President Barbie. Yeah. President Barbie, I'm groovy, Esther. Oh, you are, in fact, groovy. I like your matching costume. Or Sailor Ken and Barbie. I love it. John, you're, you're just there for the ride. OK. All right, see your mans. You are sparkly. We're party Barbie and party Ken. I, I want to go to this party. I think Jemmy would be comfortable at this party, too. Like, the, the rainbow, the sparkle. We are Barbenheimer. I'm Bar a, I am Einstein. And I'm Science Barbie. Science Barbie and Einstein. Any, any, any costume feels on the inside, even if they're not on the outside wines? No? OK. Oh, what? Mosses? I'm original Barbie. Original Barbie. In the box and everything, mint condition? Mint condition. Mint condition. Well, yes, indeed. And you are driving around the pedestrian. <laughs> Excellent. I'm just Ken Dachai. Chala at your boy. <laughs> Who do we have here? Mario. 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 Oh, we got the whole thing. I feel like you need to. But it's 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 pretty good though. It's pretty good. Yeah. I, it, it is. I feel like we need you need like a little mushroom to carry around with you. Yeah. <laughs> that's really going all in to like do the facial hair just for Borum. That that's commitment. Commitment. All right, did I miss anyone? OK, I appreciate those who shared their costumes with us. Thank you for your bravery in trying something out. Thank you for your repurposing of old costumes into new ideas. Also, very inventive. Um, and it is, and if you, those of you who wish to join us tomorrow at 9.30, I, you're welcome to put the costumes on again, or perhaps try a new one. Mm. OK. So for our Megillah reading today, um, we are going to have some, uh, uh, let's see, where did our thing? So we, first, we have to have the blessings before our Megillah reading. Page six. And they are on page six. Five, no, really? Actual page six, not Roman numeral page six. Confusing as that is. All right. So we will bless our Megillah reading. And this is a very important mitzvah to hear some of the story of, of Purim as we move through Purim. So we'll say the blessing. We will have a little bit of an opening of the Megillah in Hebrew. And then we will switch over to an English rendition, courtesy of our friend and colleague, Rabbi Laurie Zimmerman. 
Amen. Do you want to do the opening in Hebrew? Yes. Ah, 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 Oh, <laughs> Chapter 1. The holiday of Purim began way back in the past. The land of Persia is where our story is cast. King Ahasuerus gathered men to celebrate his might. With drunken banquets he held well into the night. The king summoned Queen Vashti to show off to his friends. Vashti sent back a message saying, well, it depends. If you think I will come and dance to some tunes, my answer is no, I'm not in the mood. I'm a feminist, I've got self-respect. Your behavior demeans me, and to this, I object. The king thought, if I don't act tough, they'll mock me in my land. Equal rights from their husbands, the women will soon demand. So I'll get rid of Ashti, a new queen I will find. She'll be timid and beautiful and ever so kind. Do I have some readers? Have you been tapped for a reader? If you've been tapped for a reader, come on down. You could line up next to me. It is English. English. Laney, I'm going to ask you to take chapter two. Right here. Yeah, just, come, just line up. Good. The king held the beauty pageant, and all the young ladies tried out. He finally chose Esther. She was beautiful, no doubt. Her cousin Mordechai told readers. her, your identity you must conceal. The fact that you're a Jew, you <laughs> must not reveal. So Esther found herself near to the seat of power, a complicated place where she often did cower. Soon after Mordecai learned that the king was to be killed, it was reported and Mordecai's name recorded his duty fulfilled. The perpetrators, Bigthon and Teresh, were impaled on a stake. A deadly game they were playing, a big mistake they did make. Chapter three, thank you. Next group of readers. I, she, I'm told that there's groups. There's groups, so you, were, you guys were two, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, Lainey just did two. So you're going to do three. Okay. Um, so I think the Searmans are next, and then when is Asher? Okay. All right, so why don't, you, why don't you say the first couple, and then they'll jump in after you. It's now time. It's now time to talk about Haman. A man terribly sinister who... King Ahasuerus promoted to a high-ranking minister. All right, so let's, let, thank you. Haman. <laughs> Declared, before me, all people must bow. When Mordecai refused, Haman. <laughs> replied, this I won't allow. Mordecai said, to mere human beings, the Jews won't bow down. The explanation did not appease Haman. It was met with a frown. 
These Jews are stubborn. What kind of gall? To consolidate my power, I'll do away with them all. So Haman convinced, <laughs> convinced the king to kill all the Jews. A royal edict was written. This was big news. That's in That's in it. Okay. <laughs> chapter four. Who's our chapter four group? Chapter four. All right, come on, ever anyone who's chapter four. All right, so Scarlett, you get started, and then we'll you'll do the first couple. Yep, yeah, just the first couple, and then. Uh, um, I would do until, in, in, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. Okay. When Mordecai and the Jews learned to edit, learn edit, of the edict, learn of the edict, they became the more in their fate they could predict. Mordecai told Esther, you must, in, you must inter, intervene to save your people. After all, you are the queen. Okay. Thank you. And then, but. But if I speak up. The king will kill me. One can't just approach him. That's against royal decree. Mordecai replied, Oh, my dear, fa my dear Esther, there is so much hatred that has been allowed to fester. Do not think that you will escape with your life. If you don't speak up, there will be endless strife. Esther considered what Mordecai had to say and realized it was time to act and without delay. I will fast and approach him Though this act is not legal, civil disobedience is required, even in a case so regal. The future of my people is what's at stake. I am scared, but this is a step I must take. That must act. It's like I can't get over it. <laughs> Chapter 5. Chapter 5, group. You can, pick, you can pick it up if you want. I yeah. Esther stood before the king in his great palace. I have a matter to discuss. Please don't treat me with malice. Esther won the king's favor, and he asked, what do you need to invite you and Haman to a feast? <laughs> that is all that I plead. So they went to hear, so they went to her fa feast. feast, and Esther said, just come to one more. They said, that sounds lovely, feast we adore. Then Haman passed, passed by Mordecai, who was sitting at the gate. He shows me no respect. He is sure sealing his fate. Okay. Oh, Haman's wife, wife and oh, friends suggested just, just kill, kill Mordecai. Mordecai. We'll oh. impale him on a stake 50 cubits high. <laughs> Okay. All right, chapter six. Come on down. It was night, and the king could not sleep one wink. He ordered the records to be brought so he could think. Not till then did he learn that Mordecai had failed the plot. His servants tried to kill him. He resented that a lot. He asked, what honor was bestowed upon this fellow? Nothing, the servants replied, in a tone rather mellow. Then Haman... <laughs> approached and he said we really must speak Mordecai had to be killed he was hoping early this week but the king said I want to honor a man what should I do Haman thought <laughs> it's me he wants to exalt I'm sure it's true he replied he replied the parade must be majestic and grand the king said we'll celebrate Mordecai, Mordecai take him through the land Haman did as he told, but in mourning covered his head. He went home to his wife with a terrible sense of dread. Boo. All right, Luigi. Right. I was to be six, but uh, it's all right. <laughs> oh, and eight, nine, and ten are all together, so we'll we'll share. Okay. Here, you can pick it up. Go for it. The king and. That's too much. <laughs> the king and Haman feasted with oh, Esther. Oh, wait. The king and who? Oh. Pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> I'll dress their best. Then the king finally said, Come on, Esther, what is your request? That you save my life and my people's too, lives too. Who, we will be massacred. Don't you see? I am a Jew. Who is responsible? I want to know. You stupid king. 
It's Haman! Who has stooped this low? Haman? Cringed in terror, knowing the end was near. He groveled before Esther, his face full of fear. The stake for Mordecai was standing erect. The king said, impale Haman. On it, and none did object. Why, thank you, Andrew. Sure. All right, so we have one last section to read in English, and then we're going to close out our Megillah reading by hearing chapter 9 in Hebrew by our very own Bert Abrams. So this is all together, but if you're sharing it, then you can each read a little bit. Do you want to read some, Maya? The first, like the first two, they rhyme. Esther again pleaded, my people you must save. Do as you see fit, was the response the king gave. Great, thank you. So Mordecai issued a law that the Jews may fight. They killed tens of thousands and danced with delight. Jews took revenge and committed brutal violence. Yep. Afterwards, the land was filled with a chilling silence. We must grapple with these texts that are part of our tradition so our Judaism can fulfill a very different mission. Let us still celebrate Purim with joy each year, full of laughter and remembrance and lots of great cheer. Thank you, Madam President. All right. Bert, do you want to do it over here or over there? Here? Okay. Yeah, I don't know how to... Yeah, okay, there you go. <laughs> I'm going to start on uh, verse Hay with the uh, chapter 9, page 30, with the uh, usual trump that's connected with the reading of the Megillah. It's a very light-hearted trump. Listen to the way it goes. Vayachu hayhudim b'choi vehem makat chervu hereg v'avdahan I just read the ten sons of the villain of this piece. It's all supposed to be done in one breath because they're not worth any more than that. One breath. Uvabizaha shalhu et adam bayom hahu baha mi his par harugim bishushan habirah leaf nay hamelech. some hecklers in the audience or something. I don't know. I don't know. It's a rowdy bunch. Rowdy bunch. So tomorrow we'll be reading the whole Megillah, not just uh, the portions that we read tonight. And as Bert said, it is the same symbols that we see when we're learning to read Torah or Haftarah, but the trope is different. So it can be a little challenging to learn to chant uh, Migilat Esther, but it's a really fun melody. It's a really fun trope. And so if that's something that you might feel inspired to try next year, you don't have to do it all in one breath like Bert just did. That is a feat of its own. If you want to learn that, we can work on that. But if you want to just start learning the trope and just even take on one or two verses, we would love to bring you into the mix when we do this again next year. So. That concludes our Purim festivities officially. 
but maybe we'll end with a little Purim dance party that you are welcome to join in on. And I should have said this at the beginning, but hopefully you saw, because at the back there is some activities, there's coloring, there's some books. If anyone wants to read a little bit more of the Purim story or take something for the road, there's plenty of home intention in the other room. So hopefully you've been snacking along the way, but make sure that you also have one before you go. Hopefully you got your Mishla Wachman note from, and thanks to the Men's Club for organizing all of that. There might be a few somewhere around here that if you didn't get it, let us know and we'll make sure that you get one before you go. Um, but I want to thank everyone who helped to make all of this possible tonight. Thank you to our BTBJ Purim players. That's what I'm calling you now. Thank you to everyone who will be reading Megillah tomorrow. We're back here at 9.30 in the morning for our Megillah reading and also a little bit of a study on Chapter 9, which we often overlook. And I wish you a very joyous and a very happy Purim. Chag Purim Sameach.